Hello booktube, well I'm on my way to the bus and off to teach at lunchtime today and it's, I don't know, 30, 31, 33, it's going to be really hot for the next week and so there won't be a whole lot of outdoor filming and I did that one on the balcony last night because I thought the cicadas were not so noisy but once I <laughs> listened to it, it's like, that's oh, really obnoxious so I don't hear any now so what time do they get up? Or maybe they all died in the night. Anyway, um, I did some reading this morning that was really great. I am, it's probably the um, Altaf Fatima novel, The One Who Did Not Ask, if I'm remembering the title correctly, that's captured my heart. It's really something special and it's not in print and that is a crime. I actually tweeted to the translator Ruxana Ahmad. Hi Ruxana. She said she'd check out my channel to tell her how much I was enjoying it. And uh, I, I'll repeat it here in case you didn't believe me. It's as good as any other novel I've read from South Asia. I mean, I'm only 50 pages in, but wow, it's really compelling, emotionally compelling. I really need it after my Muriel Spark debacle. Stay tuned for my Friday reads tomorrow. I really need something emotionally satisfying and compelling and very literary, and I have found it. Uh, there was also... Hey again, how's the light? I'm in Shinjuku, I'm at Shinjuku now. I just came on the bus and I'm redoing the last part of that because the wind was just terrible and this isolated uh, in the, with all these big buildings. The wind isn't here, so let me uh, re-say some of that. So yeah, I tweeted Ruxana Ahmed because I'm just loving uh, her translation of the Alta Fatima novel and she replied and of course I just by accident mentioned that I'm discussing it on my YouTube channel just by accident and she said she would check it out so hello hello Roxana um, this novel needs to be in print it's as good as any South Asian novel I've ever read so far so it's a it's a, it's a crime but the, the, the main thing that I wanted to repeat to make sure it got into this video is I have decided that, this being Women in Translation Month, that I'm also going to focus on the translation aspect of the readathon and going to talk about the translators. So I've read up on Ruxana and the other two that I'm currently reading, and they are interesting and they do other stuff other than translating. So I want to talk about that and kind of profile them as I'm reading my deep through my list of translated works. So I'm not going to do that trying to, while I'm standing up here, but uh, tomorrow is a... I'm at home most of the day, so I'll, I'll uh, start talking about the translators more. But yes, I teach at lunchtime. It's my highest paid gig, unfortunately. It's only one hour twice a month. I wish it was more often because it it's, uh, pays really well. Um, and then I have about a five hour break and then I teach for two hours tonight, early this evening. And that's my day. But I will spend the afternoon at a Starbucks reading, reading, reading. So life is beautiful. Hey there, you see that building behind me? I, I've been working in this uh, part of Tokyo for years and uh, I've never found out what it is. But it looks like it should be a famous building. The uh, parliament buildings are not very far from here, the Diet. Kokai, but oh look at the, speaking of oh my uh, but this is I asked my friend Mariko and she doesn't know I should be able to find out using Google Maps it doesn't look that great in the video as it does when you it's really impressive when you walk by it anyway I don't have much time but I've had a wonderful afternoon reading in fact I'm just gonna take I just start walking and talk and walk at the same time uh, quite enjoying the Yuka, the Yuka Tsushima novella. For a few, a chapter or two, I was thinking, ah, you know, it's kind of dry, a little bit, maybe a little bit boring, but no, it's not. It's, uh, it's got a quiet power. And about this newly single mother. And uh, yes, there's some dramatic moments in and amongst all the kind of humdrum quietly powerful stuff about her trying to forge an identity for herself as a single mother in 1970s Tokyo, which was a, hero, a hero's journey for sure. 
but just something I read uh, a little just a few minutes ago where her daughter had had the chicken pox so she wasn't walking her daughter to the daycare center for a couple weeks maybe uh, and this this little old lady that was always in a dirty yukata that she had obviously been sleeping in and her hair was always messy and she looked kind of borderline homeless maybe a little bit of dementia and she the first day the daughter was back this woman who'd never spoken to the the main character or her daughter before came up very alarmed and said oh my god I thought something had happened are you okay are you okay and I mean those kind of situations in any big city are you know, somewhat striking and uh, kind of moving really and it just reminded me of this woman who I've, who I've, who I had never spoken to but uh, in a cafe near my, near my old place Sasasuka my favorite cafe I've done some vlogging from there uh, and she was just a lovely she wasn't even that old she looked like she might have been 70 maybe a little bit older but she was very nicely dressed not not like this character in that way not bedraggled but she was in that cafe almost every time that I was by herself oh I don't want the wind the wind is gonna would ruin my story so I'll just duck in here and risk being a, a few minutes risk being a few minutes late but you know how people are in big cities, right? And the look on people's faces when they're in public. And so if you combine Japanese culture, which is quite remote and stiff and formal in many situations, with big city culture anywhere, and Tokyo's a really freaking unfriendly place to be a lot of the time. Especially to be as a out in public by yourself, uh, it can really wear you down. The, the glaring and the, the the grumpy look of sun, almost everybody's faces, and the rush hour pushing and stuff, which is you know leaving aside all the wonderful things that I love about living here. But it's it, that that's the one thing that's really I don't like. And this old lady, would, again, she wasn't that old, but she just had a beatific smile, a shy smile, and she would just kind of walk around the cafe like it was her home that was the that was the energy that she would give off like she was too shy to come up and say welcome but her facial expression was welcome welcome and i just i just loved her and then suddenly she never came back and i saw her every day or every time i went there for months maybe a year and then no more so i presume something happened something bad but I was reminded of her reading this chapter and so that's what I wanted to tell you okay time to go to work I'm gonna be late hey well it's uh, nine o'clock I'm home and I'm tired so uh, my wrap-up is gonna be brief and not particularly profound just on my first glass of wine here I think I have just enough energy to wrap this up quickly and get it edited and get it online before I crash. So just to wrap up the day, I didn't read very many pages of this, but this is gonna be a slow read. This might be the one that I don't finish in 10 days. Britta warned me about that, but I am delighted to tell you that this has now turned into a spontaneous buddy read with Karen of Run Right Reads. And I think she's going to hold my hand and explain everything to me. We've only traded uh, messages once um, in the last 18 hours or something and uh, she had a lot made a lot more of the imagery than my brain could make and it was just delightful to get her perspective I have now read a little bit into the th third chapter called the forelock and the forelock is Chichesco's uh, hair his pomaded wavy hair which was on, on every big poster and you know cult of the cult of the personality right the third paragraph. I'm just going to read you two sentences. 
the forelock, his forelock, the forelock shines, it peers into the country every day, and it sees. Yeah, the way that she's writing about uh, living life in a totalitarian society, it's really quite stunning, but it's slow going because it's, it's lush, um, not lush, it's really profound imagistic poetry that is this the uh, undergirding of the story it really is the story it's the way she's telling the story so I want to you know I have to I, I want to and I have to slow right down to take as much of it in and I'm missing uh, no doubt I'm missing a lot of the most profound layers of the symbolism but uh, thank God for Karen of Run Right Reads but no this is wonderful this is the as I said earlier today this is the one that has captured my heart I love uh, the dialogue. I love the repartee between the various siblings and cousins and the, the teasing and it's just so wonderfully rendered. It's just an absolute delight. The characters are so vivid and the writing is fantastic. The translation, it, the credit it goes to the translation that it's such a wonderful read in English. Now it is confusing because the family relationships, the extended families, it's really confusing and there's a lot of uh, nicknames and not just nicknames but terms of endearment and words like cousin, uncle and stuff that are rendered in Urdu and there is a glossary at the back and then a kind of a family vocabulary glossary at the beginning and I'm flipping back and forth and it is, I'm still confused but I have decided that I don't need to keep the genealogy particularly clear to experience the character so I'm not worrying too much about it but just wonderful and this is not as fast of a read as I thought because it's just it's emotionally dense. So, why would I want to rush through something like that? I'm not gonna. And this is the one that I read the most out of today. I am now about halfway through. And it's really good too. As I said before, it's very simply told. The translation, the prose is very simple. And at, first, some, at some points it feels kind of dry. But there are outbursts of emotion and... It's such a faithful rendering of how, in my limited experience, I've been living in Japan nine years, nine and a half years, but it just, it totally captures how a Japanese person would experience the stuff that this woman is experiencing, the joys and the, and the, uh, the heartbreaks. And I, I love the heroine. She's so brave and so confused and she's, you know, step by step making a life. I, I did want to make a a profound meditation on the fact that rooftops figure prominently in both of these novels so far, but I don't have the brain power tonight, so maybe I'll take a stab at that another day. Tomorrow I have almost the entire day to read and make videos, so tomorrow's Day, uh, what is it? Uh, women in, the Women in Translation Readathon Head Start Day 3 might be really intense. Stay tuned. Oh, sorry, one more thing before I go. Book mail! This came in the mail tonight. This is the, tra this is the book for my Women in Translation Readathon translated from the Welsh. Martha Jack and Shanko by Carol Lewis translated from the Welsh. So this is the one for a book translated from a language you've never read a book translated from before. And it's translated by Gwen Davies. It's just under 200 pages, so I will, might even start this tomorrow. My goal tomorrow is to finish this. I had hoped to be two-thirds of the way through this, and I doubt that's going to happen, and that doesn't matter. If I read less than seven books in ten days, uh, it really doesn't matter, and I'm not going to kill myself or start skimming these wonderful books to, 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 to try that. But I should be able to finish this one tomorrow and make some headway and maybe, depending on how early in the day I finish the Tsushima, to get a start on this one or another shorter one. That's all I got. It's been a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.